Come join Libby, Molly, and Tiffany, the ladies of Consignment Chats, where we talk about all things consignment. Hey, ladies. Hi. How are y'all doing today? Great. Great. (laughs) Good. I like to hear it. I like to hear it. Welcome to episode 24 of Consignment Chats, otherwise known as Sea Chats, just so you know. It's catching on. It's catching, catching on. on. Hashtag C yeah. chats. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So episode 24 today, we're going to talk about something that um, I think a lot of people have been looking to do and we've discussed over and over again, especially in pandemic times, um, how to run your business, run a physical and an online business simultaneously. Yeah. Can get tricky. But we got a lot of tips. We've got a lot of tricks. We've got some advice. We've got some discussions. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk today about how to run a hybrid model for your consignment business. Yes. All right. So I think what we're going to do is let's break it down and let's first talk about advantages. And then we'll talk about those challenges that we run into. Yeah. Why do we want to run a hybrid business? Why? I what are the advantages? <laughs> there are so many good advantages. Let's start with visibility. Yeah, I mean, let's think about that for a second. Um, you're reaching so many more people when you're online as opposed to just, you know, your physical storefront and your customer base, you know, expands exponentially when you're online. And uh, those those limitations, those geographical limitations are pretty much removed when you go online. Yeah. Uh-huh. So why not? Why, why not? not? What do we say if you're an eBay eBay seller on consignment? It reaches, what was the last statistic? 185 Five million, million people. Million. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. a lot of eyes on your product. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. So I know that's a great thing. And I just said, that's a lot of eyes on your product. Well, that's something that I know when we were doing a hybrid Libby, when you first opened your storefront, hired me on as your internet sales manager. So I was running the eBay side of things. Mm -hmm. Consigners loved it if their items were put in the online store. Oh yeah. It was, it was an honor. It was an honor. And yeah. Yeah. They thought it was wonderful. They did. So, so they I think, home. you know, put that out front and center, let people know, you know, we ship internationally or whatever you decide to do. I mean, we shipped internationally, you know, we have a global reach, you know, you can sign with us, your items, you know, your items may get a global audience. So yeah. um, put it out in the store front and center, let people know what you're doing. It's, it's exciting to a lot of people. And you can highlight those items. You know, we had special shelves behind my desk where those Mm -hmm. items, we would put a lot of the items on those shelves to highlight them so people saw what was online. Um, I know we would have a lot of people thrilled to see, and I say thrilled, I think in the beginning there was a lot of shock and awe as to how many packages we were shipping and Mm -hmm. where they were going. Um, they were all into where's it, you know, well, this is going to Ireland, you know, mm-hmm. from little old Conchahokan, you know, this is shipping to Germany. And so it was, they, they got a kick out of that. They really yeah. And I love, like, I always, when I think about that, I think about that, um, that large, like a state of blue glass we got, like the mm-hmm. vintage, I know we've mentioned it before, but I mean, it was a lot of, uh, let's say a hundred pieces. There was probably more than that, but, and they went literally to collectors all over the world. And it was just so fun to recount that. And like our customers would see a lot of it went to Rome for whatever reason, Um, a lot of blue glass, but (laughs) that stuck in my head. Rome was in their blue period at that time. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So But I think, yeah, that's definitely an advantage is the consigners love it. They get real excited to see that and see their stuff out there to find out where it goes. I mean, we've talked about, I've mentioned it again in another episode when Tiffany mentioned the pair of shoes that she sold and how it got shipped to be put on a movie set. Mm -hmm. And I mean, how cool is that for a consigner? That consigner without Tiffany 
those, those shoes wouldn't have had that next life. I mean, that wouldn't have happened. So it's real exciting for them. Um, and I think as we talk about often with consignment, it, it gives you again, a different level of credibility if you're doing both, having a storefront and an online gives you a full circle of credibility. Yeah, and I mean, we would have people from, if they were, like they would find us online, let's say they were a couple states away and they were visiting, you know, the Philadelphia area, they would make it a point to come to our consignment store Mm -hmm. because they had been following us online or they were interested in something. And that was always, that was always fun and exciting. Like that they would, you know, go and out, even an hour out of their way on their trip just so they could come visit us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that one um, consigner that brought me those shoes, she had about 35 pairs of shoes to consign. Mm -hmm. vintage, And she had taken them all to a a brick and mortar consignment shop. And they only took like five pairs of shoes Mm -hmm. because, you know, they're limited in how much they can have in the store at any one time. So, you know, I was able to take all the rest of her shoes you know, I can take an unlimited number. I mean, or I choose the number because it all, it's all going online. Mm-hmm. I don't have to display them in a store. So it's, that's, you know, one thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, cause how many people in your area in the area of that brick and mortar where she took all those vintage shoes, how many people in that vicinity are actually going to be looking for that style of shoe, of right. vintage shoes, probably very small, mm-hmm. very small, but then you take them to somebody who's got a hybrid they're more likely to say yes because they know they're going to get a worldwide audience right on something that's as specific as both you have you opened up yourself up to way more inventory yes yes what are some other advantages ladies i think um for me and i didn't anticipate this and i'm sure a lot of people were in this situation with the pandemic is that it was the, my online business was kind of like my insurance policy when I had the store. I didn't know it at the time, but, um, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket, have two baskets, have your online and have your storefront. If something happens to one, you still have the other. So it definitely gives you that insur that kind of insurance that, um, no matter what happens, even if it is like some black swan event, like COVID, um, you're still going to be set or a difficult landlord or, or... A difficult landlord, <laughs> or there are so many things that are out of our control. And, uh, this puts you more in control of your you business. You can still do business no matter where you are. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we talked about that. We talked about the fact that it allows you to accept more items and different items than you normally would. Um, and I think it also allows you typically take things in a storefront seasonal, but this would allow you to not have to pass up on some of those special higher end items that maybe technically you'd need to pass up because it's not seasonally acceptable. Mm -hmm. But when you're hybrid, you have the option to say, we stay within season with an exception of these brands, we take year round. Mm -hmm. Um, And you limit to be able to not turn down that designer high-end brand just because it's a sleeveless sheer top. Um, You can actually accept it and just put it online and... Ta-da. Brilliant. Yeah. I think that naturally leads us into some of the, some of the challenges. Of, yes. Absolutely. You know, it's easier said than done, right? To run, you know, a hybrid model and have it. Sun. There are things, there are logistics you really need to consider ahead of time. And we kind of just jumped in and learned this the hard way, I would say. Wouldn't we you did. Say, yes. <laughs> and I think we changed what we did several times over the Till we found what really smoothly yeah. was working. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to think back to the earliest of what we did. I know when we first started, we had so few items that we did online mm-hmm. because we were new and starting. Mm-hmm. I remember being so excited when we got number 100 of a listing and it was like, ah, mm-hmm. we got a hundred. Mm-hmm. Um, that was uber exciting, but we really stuck I think back then to a lot of the just true high designer 
brands when we first mm-hmm. started out. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so the inventory separation, you know, you're having to determine what has priority over what. Um, like we said, when we first started, we were very specific with what brands we would take to put online, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We had a very, you know, if it was like even Banana Republic, I don't think we did unless it was like some spectacular brand and we stuck with collectibles any of those auction antique kind of items that you wanted to put on auction to get the -hmm. best price from collectors as possible for your consigner Um, and that was kind of how we started out and Um, we did uh we did and i think this is a really good idea kind of hand select the consigners whose items we were going to put online If we sense that somebody was a little bit, you know, hesitant or, you know, maybe going to be difficult down the road, you don't want to put all, invest all that time and energy because it is time and energy to create that listing and put that up online to have them come in and say, you know what, I don't want to extend the consignment period or, you know, if you have a pending sale, you know, just people that are a little, consigners that would be a little more flexible, I think, are a better choice for that. Right. And we did offer, I forgot about that when you just said extending, we did a lot of times extend some of those higher end items um, Mm -hmm. uh, because they were online. So they would get uh, an extension, which was nice. The consigner, you know, they liked having that happen. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing. You know, the other thing was how do we, that's how, how do we separate what we're going to list yeah. But then you also have your space, your floor space. How are you going to separate what happens when the customer comes in and wants to buy that item off the floor, but you've got it on eBay and you've got employees working in your store? You know, when we think back when I I was running eBay, so I knew what was in eBay. But if I'm not working, because I didn't work weekends back then, (laughs) if I wasn't working and on a Saturday or a Sunday, one of the other um, part-time people sold something that was on eBay, we would need to remove it from eBay, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you go about tracking that and keeping that clear? So there's a lot of different ways we kind of went about when it was smaller items, you know, a smaller grouping of items, it was easier. Like I said, we had special shelves that were behind my desk. So we would display Mm -hmm. items in those shelves and had a sign where everybody knew I'm listed on eBay, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, When we got into clothing, we had a rack originally that was eBay. But then as we grew, do you remember? Yeah, Yeah, we had the eBay rack that I had a sign up that these items are on eBay, Mm -hmm. but we would still miss things. So then we realized we needed to do actually on the tags, a separate identification on a tag. And it was as simple as me having a thin little green Sharpie and putting an E in the corner of an item if it was on eBay. That way, if somebody else was there checking out and they saw that E, they could immediately shoot me a text if I wasn't there saying, you know, take a picture of the label, send me a text so I could pull it offline. Mm -hmm. So Uh, Yeah, and I mean, sometimes it happens where it was like literally within seconds, somebody would have that item in their hands, you know, ready to check out and it would sell online. So, you know, you had to have, a a clear policy of what is going to take precedence there. Like, do you honor the online sale or do you honor the, you know, the customer that's standing in front of you? Right. So, and I think that's a personal business choice. Yeah, I do too. I'm not even going to offer advice on that. Uh -uh. I'm going to offer advice on that because I think that is a personal choice. Yeah. Tiffany, you were going to say something. So I had to deal with some of that in the store that I ran because Mm -hmm. we had a, well, we use Shopify. And so every item in the store was on our website. Mm-hmm. So, so it, it would happen, that, you know, if things would sell online that, you know, I mean, it has to be pulled off the shelf in the store. And as a manager, I got all the texts every time an online sale happened. And so I was, even if I wasn't at the store, I had to then call the store and say, okay, pull this off. Right. <laughs> pull this on the shelf. So it was a constant job. Even when I wasn't working, I had to like be working. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely an added um, job, 
I mean, it's an added responsibility and something that you need to track diligently. diligently. Yeah, and I mean, even with the automations, there are ways to automate that with your software. You really do need somebody that has their eyes on that and is overseeing it because mistakes yeah. like that can be very, very costly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, on both ways, you have to think about, I know we're not going to give advice, but you'd have to think about the two different ways. You've got your customer that lives in your neighborhood, in your community, and then you've got, you know, negative negative points against you if you're selling on eBay and have to cancel a sale, you know, like, so, so you really. The other way to kind of avoid that is um, you can do a physical separation of inventory. Inventory that was store owned that we had online was literally in the back room, boxed up and not available for, you know, walk-in customers. You can create a physical, you know, barrier so it's not available on the floor. And that's an But option. we would have people locally who would shop our online store and then say, come in that day or two days later and go, oh, and I, the other day I bought blah, blah, blah. And we'd have, you know, go in the back and grab it for them. Yeah. So and then they'd end up picking something else up off the floor while they're shopping. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not yeah. bad. Oh, yeah. It was a good, um, a good thing. And so everybody will have different ways to separate their inventory. You'll figure out what works well for you. But the advice there is just make sure right out of the gate that you have something that separates or highlights what's in your online store versus what's just store. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And a way to keep up with that. So other challenges um, or things to think about? You know, the one thing I want to bring up is uh, auctions. We used to do, I mean, we still do, we still do auctions mm -hmm. for things that have an indeterminate value or, you know, items like that. Now, if you are running an auction, you need to physically separate that. It cannot be available for you know, sale in your store. Just think that through for a minute. Um, if people are bidding online on an item, so what we would do is we'd put up a sign that said, these items are on auction. You do know, you remember they were our top shelf items? Top shelf items. They were yeah, on they the were top, top shelf. shelf. Yeah. So if they yeah. were top shelf, they were auction items and meant that you could bid online for them, but you couldn't mm -hmm. buy them. Or if they didn't sell you, um, I think we used to put the date up there, like auction ending. Mm -hmm. Maybe we did. I don't quite remember, but just think about those auction items. And, um, and it is kind of fun for the customers to get involved in the auction too. Well, and I'm just sitting here thinking about that. The other thing that they would love, yes, they would get, they would get vested in the auction because they would come in and go, how's that cake plate doing? What, what are yeah. y'all at yet? You know, we'd be like, oh, it's got three, five bidders, whatever. And it's $79, you know. Um, they would get into that. But the other thing over time that they would get into is hearing the cha-ching sound on our, our phones when something would sell. And they would hear it while they were shopping in the store. Like, ooh, what There's you one about? item I remember in particular. I don't know if you have the same memory of like customers that were literally like consigners. They were customers and consigners that were jumping up and down in the store. The Harley Davidson jacket. <gasps> The, yes. uh, they came in, they consigned it. We put it right up online and all of a sudden we're hearing like ching, 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 ching. And it literally Wait. sold while they were still in the store. And they were just like, so it was so much fun and so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, that was awesome. I forgot about that because I did. We, I would write up photographs that laid it out. I was like, let's get this up now. Yeah. That was I so totally fun. forgot about that. Yeah, that always and it's fun because it gets your customers. It helps build your community because they get excited. You mm -hmm. know, they get this reach out that they don't think about and it's exciting for them. Yeah. So something else, you know, Tiffany was talking about her. Um, she used Shopify with the other business she worked for, which was retail, not consignment, if I'm correct. I think mm -hmm. I'm correct on that. Um, we use started out with eBay. So selling platforms, let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So what episode number? We do talk a lot about selling platforms. Tiffany? Five. <laughs> five. Episode five? Episode five. We get a lot into that. And um, I mean, I'd love to know your thoughts on it. I would say if you are running a hybrid, it's probably best to stick with one platform. Yeah. It gets, you know, 
I mean, exponentially complicate it when you add in an, uh, one more platform, one more platform, it gets, because we did, I think we had, um, we had Poshmark, Etsy, eBay, um, and the storefront, like all at one time. And it really was not, we were figuring things out, but yeah. in retrospect, I think it would have just been much easier and much less labor intensive. And we would have probably earned more if we concentrated on just one online platform, just picked it and just went with it. Yeah. Because the other thing that to take into account during that time too, is if you, I'm sure 99.9% .9 of the businesses out there that are doing this or contemplating this, you have social media pages. I'm going to have to think you've sold items off of your social media posts, whether it's because it's linked or in the early days when we weren't linking, we would put a post in and the phone would ring 10 minutes later. I need that pair of shoes. Can I give you a card over the phone? I want to buy them now, you know? Um, so that's, that's a whole nother thing that you have to manage, you know? So you have to think about your online selling platform for your hybrid but keep in mind that there's also that social media aspect too that people will buy from from time to time. So you can really overwhelm yourself if you do too many um, for your hybrid model, too many major selling platforms. So pick the one that works for you. So I like that. I like that. All right. And so here's the biggie. Together, I would just want to mention Tiffany's spreadsheet of all the different selling platforms. Yes. If you go into our community, Tiffany's the community manager. Uh, let her know you want access to that beautiful <laughs> Molly has it handy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, telling you, I, it's so pretty that I keep it here. It makes me happy. I just love her spreadsheet. Y'all yeah. need to get you one. <laughs> if you go I ahead, Libby. I'm sorry. I should print it out poster size and laminate it. And that, uh, <laughs> and I can hang it behind me. <laughs> yeah. And then none of the platforms can change ever. They all have to stay the same. <laughs> right. right. No, they have to stay the same because Tiffany laminated it. Darn it. Yeah, damn it. <laughs> That's smart thinking, Libby, that they can go and look anyway, at that. I, we cut you off from your, your spiel about the uh, I know. Yeah. We both cut her off. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> you that guys was a, way better than mine. I don't even remember what I was talking about. You were talking about referencing when you're thinking about your so platform. If you join the community. <laughs> if they join, if you join the community, you can message me your email, and I'll give you access to the. You can give you access. Beautiful spreadsheet. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I want to throw there to answer them. I want to throw out one more challenge, and this was such a big one for me such a big one for me when I first started with this hybrid and you pulled me in. It just kept me up at night, sick to my stomach. Oh my gosh, Shipping, what? shipping, oh, yeah. shipping. Oh, yeah. it so intimidated me. Like literally I couldn't sleep and I would wake up nervous with butterflies the next morning if I had to ship something. Like I just was, you know, it was so overwhelming as a newbie, you know. It is. So, it is. And you hear that across the board from, you know, so many people is that's, yeah, that's a yeah. tough one. Well, so that's something set up to do that in the store. Yeah. We have episode 13 about how to conquer shipping. Mm -hmm. huh? Yep. So you that's can reference that to help with shipping, but in a hybrid situation, yeah, like Libby say, you're going to have to find your space in your store of where you're going to set up your shipping area. We were lucky enough to have a back storage room that we could set up a, a long table back there. And I did my, in fact, I think that long table is what Libby uses to this very day, perhaps. It is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it was such a good table. Yeah. Um, but we had a long table that kept in the back. That way nobody mm -hmm. saw it. But they would get excited when I'd come out from the swinging doors with my pile of boxes <laughs> to bring them for, for the, you know, and I would display them. Here's a benefit. Challenges are ship, the shipping challenges, right? You have to figure out, you know, what you're going to use to ship. You have to have storage room to put those supplies somewhere in your store because you're going to have to have your packing tape, your packing materials, boxes, all that available. Mm -hmm. um, the space to ship it because you really don't want that out on your storefront with all the ripping and, you know, every now and then I would do one real quick, you know, but typically that's not where you want to do it. Mm -hmm. But the benefit is, again, the excitement it builds 
when they see, I would put them in front of my desk and like make a tower there. Mm-hmm. And Miles, the mailman. I was just going to say, Miles. we have to give Miles a shout out. Yeah. Miles, if you're still there, I love you, man. <laughs> Miles would come in and pick up all his back boxes and head out. And every now and then I would make a mistake and realize, oh my gosh, I put the wrong labels on the wrong bags. And I'd have to get in my car and drive Conchahawk until I found Miles. <laughs> <laughs> Did I not? I mean, that happened. It happened. I grab the packages yeah. from him and say, I'll be back. Wh- which direction are you headed? I'd go back and fix my labels and go back out and take it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, you know, shipping is something you really have to consider your space, where you're going to do that, all that good stuff. But also know the benefit is it does, again, help to build that excitement. Um, people love to see that. You know, people no. enjoy that. I was just thinking that would be such a funny TikTok or real Molly chasing around the mailman. (laughs) (laughs) Miles was my buddy. I miss him. He was so nice. Mm -hmm. But he was a fellow eBay seller. How fun was that? Yeah. Yeah. He did sneakers, didn't he? He did a lot of sneakers, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Super nice. But y'all, those are some great... um, things to think about. Can y'all think about anything else? I mean, I think we really hit a lot of things you need to think about when you're doing hybrid. If you Mm -hmm. want to add that model, um, a lot of things for people to think about, but I, I got nothing horribly negative to say about it. I think if anybody's even thinking about it, go for it. Go for it. Because like Libby said, you can't get any better insurance for your business, no matter what happens, you're going to be okay. You can still keep going. You know, and and Libby's Libby's sitting proof of that. Right. And if we learned anything from 2020, we learned that you need a backup plan. Yes. (laughs) You You need a couple backup plans. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. So I highly recommend if you're the least bit contemplating it, I say, go for it. And you can start small. You can start small. There's no, you know. We did. We started small. Just mm-hmm. did a few high, high end items and slowly grew. Like I say, it was that hundredth I- listing was a big. Ah. That was the most exciting listing we had. Was that hundredth I mean, listing for whatever reason? It I just mean, was in the thousands now, but that one hundred was the most exciting one for me. Yeah. All right. I know y'all have heard me talk a lot today on this episode. My mouth has been going, but. <laughs> Typically, we have Tiffany as our community chatter girl because she is our community manager. She takes care of all things in our um, community page, and she is brilliant at it. But I'm doing a little takeover for this one. Just a little takeover because I am going to introduce my first challenge. So if you want to be a part of it, you got to come join our little Facebook community group. Tiffany, how do they do that? Well, if you join our, if you like our Facebook page, you can hit the request to join the community, which the group, which is attached to the page. And I believe there's also a link on our website if you go to consignmentchats.com. So go on there, answer that couple of questions. We'll bring you in and you're going to want to be there because I'm doing Molly's Lista Palooza Weekend Challenge. So at my house, we like to say it's a list of Palooza day or it's a photo Palooza day because we're just goofballs like that. We just we're silly. So I decided to take my home list of Palooza fun that Nick and I have and we'll take a whole day and just list, list, list or photograph, photograph. And we're going to have a list of Palooza weekend challenge. So June 11th, 12th and 13th. Join us for the challenge, list like crazy. And I mean crazy, because Libby's already got plans. She's been telling me some stuff she's got going on. She's Molly. I said, I'm hiring a dog walker for that day. (laughs) I am like not making any commitments that whole weekend. Do not let her win, y'all. She is so competitive. And I can't win because I'm running it. Tiffany, get it in gear, girl. Get it in gear. Well, down. 
The only thing I'm worried about is I don't know where in my house moving journey I will be. Where you're going to be? We're still gonna <laughs> well, well, you got to do it. We're still going to get you. You got to give her some challenge here. So Contingency, no, um, no closing dates on Lista Palooza. <laughs> right. right. You need I'll to tell, tell them that right off the bat. You cannot we close on your house. Again. We have the 11th through the 13th. <laughs> Molly's list of Palooza weekend challenge. Get yourselves in the community because it is going to be good. And yes, there will be prizes because Molly loves prizes. So come on over, go to consignmentchats.com, get connected with us and be ready for June 11th through the 13th. You don't want to miss it. So ladies, until Bye. next time. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for joining Libby, Molly, and Tiffany, the ladies of Consignment Chats, as we talked about all things consignment. To learn more and keep chatting, find Consignment Chats on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Facebook, and Instagram.